What's up guys, Matt from vapeuse.com here, back again to keep you up to date with the latest and greatest in herb vaping news and tech. Now, for this week we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I've brought you guys a lot of vaporizer reviews, but I haven't really delved into anything deeper than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean and replace the battery on my Hay Square Pro. Now the Hay Square Pro is easily one of my favorite releases of the past couple of years. It's an on-demand vaporizer, which someone like me that vapes throughout the day really appreciates. So you can microdose with it, you don't have to have the chamber in a constant heat setting losing turfs and flavonoids, you can just preheat it each time when you're ready to take a big hit. So the Hay Square Pro, obviously from Hayes Tech in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, has four chambers, so four individual baking chambers. So you can either have four full of dry herb, four of concentrate, or do whichever mix you please. So I've heard a bunch of different ways about people packing this up. Some people do two chambers of sativa for the morning, two of indica for the night, and maybe a couple of different hybrids for throughout the day, who knows? This choice is yours, but this is really just a fantastic little device, especially for on the go, it's very discreet, Decent battery life, obviously, it's just not on that constant heating period. And then having the four chambers, never having to stop and chop up and swip in a new chamber or a little bit of dab or something like that. With this one here, it really is just pure vaping class. So with the Hay Square Pro, I've been using mine a shitload lately, so I'm gonna have to give mine a little bit of a touch up. The battery on mine has also gone a little bit shot. That was my own fault. I didn't charge it for very long when I first got it. I do that with vape sometimes. I'm a little bit too eager just to get straight into it. And then using it heaps and heaps for the past couple of months, it's really just uh, going a little bit worse for us. I've got a new battery here, and for any of you guys that are looking to switch up the battery in this one, Hey, hopefully this helps. So with Haze, most of their devices, they have all of the elements available for individual purchase. So with the Haze Square Pro, you can get a new mouthpiece tube, you can get new baskets, new screens, batteries, internal elements, heating element, anything that you want. You can just pin this thing out and keep it going. So realistically, these vapes can last for up to 15, 20, 30 years. Who knows what the future will hold by Haze Square. But right now, I'm gonna show you guys how to take out the battery and chuck in a new one. So what you're gonna need for that, Hazer does have them for sale on their site, but I just have one at home, it's the little Allen key. So if you've got, I guess that's a, a 1.5 to two mil Allen key, if you've got like a little two mil key, all you gotta do is just open up the Hay Square from the little turntable thing on the side, locate the heating element side where the battery is located. So obviously the other side is where the four chambers are kept. So we can keep that over here for now, as we're gonna be giving that a detailed clean in a minute. Now, we've got this little, uh, these, sort of hexagon shaped screws in the middle. So I'm just gonna hit them with the Allen key real quick. You just wanna take out each one of these three individual screws and make sure that you don't lose them. If you've got one of those little bowls with like that's magnetized, so you can stick screws and stuff to it, by all means use that. But if you don't, just make sure you keep a little handle on these screws. So this one's, oh, it's already coming apart, look at that. Super easy. So I believe I might not even need to take this screw off. I think this is for the heating element. Okay, so that part I can leave. Put that over here for safekeeping. As I believe on the uh, on the website where they tell you how to replace the battery, it's just these little ones on the side. So I'll hit these two screws out with the Allen key. Chuck them there, and there you go guys. So these two screws just to the right hand side of that little twist part in the middle there pop off quite simply. And then to get that battery out. So it just pops out like that. So it's a little fiddly once you get to it and you can see they've got some insulation and tape and stuff in there so it's not getting too hot. But to replace the actual battery itself, it's quite simple. Okay guys, so that top panel, you're gonna wanna do your best to leave that on because that's just gonna confuse you like it did me. So that. All you need to do to get this battery up and going is just, just take those left and right hand side screws out. So I'm just gonna chuck that little top part back together now. So what is in this top part when you undo it, so if you have to replace the heating element or something like that, there's this little button. And I believe it just has to do with the, with the heating element, not with the battery. So it's actually a lot more simpler to overcomplicate things. Pretty much all you do, just open up the back after you've taken off those two screws from the sides here. There'll be a little plug underneath. You can see where these three wires are connected to. There's a little white plug and all you gotta do is just pull that bad boy out. Simple as that. So the second battery, we'll just pull out the pack now. We'll just check. Yeah, looks pretty similar. No dramas and I think this one, I'll have to connect it and then sit it in. So I'll just make sure these prongs are on the 
bottom. Okay. So we're interconnected. Get those wires and stuff down the side. And get this back back on and see how we've done. So there we go guys, I'll just chuck that second screw back in. You can see everything's functioning as normal. Giving it a few clicks to turn it on. I won't use it now because I do want to give that a proper five hours charge this time. But as simple as that, swapping the battery over. So I've got this H-square battery, recycle that accordingly, my local battery depot. And now we're gonna to get to the more difficult part, which is breaking down this thing for a clean. So now you can chuck the heating element and the battery over here, push it to the side. Get rid of the Allen key, and what I'm going to need is just the herb chamber. So giving this thing a detailed clean on the weekly basis is extra necessary. So the haze in particular, although it is a full convection vaporizer, I've had this thing combust on me on a number of occasions simply due to not cleaning. So if you're not going to clean and maintain this thing, these tiny little holes that are in these, uh, these stainless steel screens at the top of the chamber just become caked with resin. And as that is just not really allowing the chamber to circulate air properly, it just results in combustion. So this is super easy to pull apart. Putting it back together is a little bit trickier. Now Haze does have an optional filling tool that also helps to maintain and clean the device, but it is not included in the kit, it's optional. And I have on our blog post shown you guys how to clean and maintain using that kit, but obviously for most people that haven't picked up one of those filling tools, I'm just gonna do this the OG way. So this thing is pretty difficult to pull out, the silicon at the top, but with these little packing tweezers that Haze has included, just fold down and pull and the silicon will come right off. So obviously the silicon elements, we don't really want to introduce to, uh, to alcohol that much. So I've got some isopropyl alcohol, 100% on the right here that I'm gonna to use to help clean these metal parts. The silicone parts, you can give a little wipe if they're sticky with an alcohol wipe, but these ones in particular, the silicon being non-stick, it hasn't picked up any of this resin here. So what I'm gonna do, I take this piece here, I'll give it a tiny wipe with the alcohol just for any residual smells or nothing like that. But you certainly don't want to be soaking any silicon in ethyl alcohol for an extended period. So this is obviously the interior where the screens touch, the short wipe, same as on this side, set that to the side. Now each of these individual screens, depending on how often you maintain your device, is going to have to be clean. So you can already see on the base here, I've been using concentrates and dry herb with this, uh, this vape, the Haze Square. So it's got a little bit of that concentrate resin built up on the inside too. It's very sticky to the touch. So you're going to need alcohol wipes, a couple, two or three, 100% alcohol wipes. Uh, if you've actually got a alcohol at home, the rubbing alcohol or something like that, or you've already got a jar, like you've got an Arisa Solo or something with glass parts that constantly needs to be cleaned with alcohol, you can go ahead and chuck them in there and it's gonna collect all of that resin off. You can leave them soaking for an hour. If you're like me, you wanna get right back to vaping, just get this alcohol wipe or a couple of them. Separate each individual one of these screens, give them a nice little scrub. And there's just two different types of screens here. So there's these ones here which sit in the bottom, they're embedded and that lets the air to circulate through the middle due to these little ridges. And then there's just your traditional stainless steel filter screen, which is helping to keep the particles out of the vapor path. So I'll just go ahead and give these a clean. Okay, so now that these screens are all nice and clean, you're gonna to wanna to get that residual alcohol off them. So you just get a cup of some hot water, you soak them in there for a couple of seconds, and give them a little rub with a bit of tissue paper as they come out, and you can load these ones back up. Okay guys, so I've washed off these little screens on the inside with the alcohol. So whether you've soaked them in some hypopropyl or simply used some alcohol wipes, afterwards you're gonna to to get any residual alcohol out of there. So you just soak them in a little bit of water for a while, and you just pull all these screens out of here. There's no resin, not sticky to the touch at all. I'm just gonna to wanna to put these in some paper towel. And just wipe them off before you chuck them back into the vape itself. Obviously we don't want any water or anything getting into the electrics or the heating unit. So all of these go together in a pair. So you're gonna to wanna to locate just one of each of the types of screens. So you get this sort of the internal screen that allows the airflow to circulate a little bit. And then just get one of these chamber screens. You're gonna to wanna to put it down 
in the bottom. So you can see they're actually shaped like this teardrop for a reason. That's how it fits perfectly into the bottom of the silicone tray. So you have to place it chamber screen first. It just pops in like that. And then just followed by the interior chamber screen. You want to make sure that those bumps are pointing down. So right now you can see on the base, you can see the little uh, chamber screen coming through. I'm going to flip it to this side. You can see it makes up the teardrop shape. So it's got the wide screen on the bottom with all the little holes. And then it's just got this three poke screen on the top. All right, I just want to do that for all four sides. Just following through and just making sure that you're not pushing down through the base as well. This is obviously made a little bit easier if you've got that uh, filling tool. So if you've got the little blue filling tool that comes with the Hay Square, but as they're yet to include it in the Pro Kit, I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way. And it definitely is easier to angle these bad boys in. If you put the narrower end into this teardrop side first and then follow through, it's gonna be a lot easier. Pop them like that, and the next step is where it gets a little bit tricky. You just wanna make sure that everything's sitting perfectly in the chamber. You're gonna take this top cap again, that's got the little turntable thing on the top. Just position that inside the disc. So if you can sit it in like this, you should be able to push it all the way down, keeping those screens locked in place. It should be locked and loaded like that. So now you can see perfectly flat, all the bits of silicone are pressed down, all the screens are sitting perfectly in place. And what we want to do before we chuck it back together is just give these herb baskets a little bit of a clean. So for a deep detailed clean, you can remove the basket entirely, chuck it in some alcohol, but as this one is not that dirty, I'll just hit it with this brush a little bit, <laughs> give it a little bit of blow treatment. And the same thing, just go across the whole chamber with the brush, making sure that all of those air holes aren't obscured. You can pop your little herb baskets back in. And now just to chuck the device back together is super easy. Just locate both sides like this, pop it in together, twist back on the battery and a heating element, and there you have it. Hey Square Pro, cleaned and maintained, fresh new battery, looking fresh as the day it was born. Thanks guys, remember to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest and greatest in herb vaping news and content.